Well, now that the uh, brake fluid system has been completely flushed and refilled with brand new fresh fluid, it's time to go ahead and uh, flush out the power steering system. And uh, this is the power steering pump, and you've got the high pressure hose and uh, return line down there. And what I'll be doing is I'll be taking out that return line, running that into a bucket, and then putting a cap on this uh, nipple here to the pump. And then without the engine running, I'm going to be turning the wheels back and forth from left to right while continuously adding in uh, new fluid to the reservoir until I get nice, fresh, clean fluid coming out. And then uh, before I put it back together, I'm going to try to make a little modification here and um, go in with this uh, Magnafine power steering filter or inline filter. And I've used these before. I've got one uh, on the Lincoln Continental here, which is why it's lasting so long. And uh, it's basically a combination of a magnetic, it's got a little magnet in here, as well as a paper filter. So it's got a combination of a magnetic filtration and paper filtration. It kind of looks like a big fuel filter, but um, hopefully there's going to be enough room in there to do that. And then for uh, service fill, I'm going to go ahead and go in with a 100% synthetic, um, basically the equivalent of a Type F transmission fluid because the uh, truck, being a Ford, even though it does use the Mercon transmission fluid, they're calling for a Type F transmission fluid in the power steering system, so I want to make sure I go in with the uh, right kind of fluid, but also a more robust fluid. And uh, I've got the front tire taken off here because a lot of times it's easier to access, access some of the components from the side here so I can get the return line loose. And I'm going to actually have to take off the return line at the gear too to uh, get this out of the vehicle so I can um, install the power steering filter and then put it back on. And um, by the way, this trick also works if you've got some uh, spark plugs that are uh, hard to get to from the top. You can sometimes get to them from uh, underneath like this. I know on the newer F-150s and 250s with the uh, Dryden 5.4s, they're kind of like that. But um, anyway, let me get that uh, hose off there and get uh, some, some sort of drain system all set up and start flushing this thing out. Well this steering gear is a little bit different than uh, all the others. Uh, just turning the steering wheel back and forth without the engine running doesn't uh, produce enough force to uh, pump the oil fluid out. So what I've done is I've uh, got a jumper wire on the starter solenoid right there and I'm going to bridge that to the uh, battery. Um, via the uh, alternator lead that goes to the fuse box that has all the maxi fuses in it. So just by connecting these two leads right here that'll uh, roll the engine over. And um, I've got a uh, drain bucket right there and I've routed the uh, return hose downward and just uh, C-clamped it to the uh, lower radiator hose. And so what I'm going to end up doing is cranking the engine over manually and um, as I do that fluid level will come on down that way I'll know to, to stop the engine because I don't want to get any air in the system and while that's happening the uh, fluid is going to if I can find it again run out of that hose. So I'll demonstrate uh, both aspects of it. I'm going to go ahead initially with a, a pre-flush of whatever I have left of the petroleum type F fluid. And uh, so now we'll go ahead and kick the engine over. And you saw that fluid go on down. And I'm going to go ahead and top it up again, and I'll show you what goes on down below. Alright, I got the uh, fluid topped up again in the reservoir. And I got the wheels in a different position now, cocked hard to the left. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, set the camera down. 
so you guys can see the uh, other end of what happens. So it's still draining out. Looks like it's actually coming out fairly clean. I'm going to go ahead and uh, use up that remaining bottle of fluid. And um, I'm flushing it out first to get all the crappy fluid out of there. And um, then I'll flush it out again with the synthetic fluid. And the last thing I'll do is put the uh, try to put the inline filter on there if I'm able to. If the, uh, if the nipple size is right, it's a uh, 3 8 Hopefully that's the right size. And hopefully I have enough room. And then that way the filter is just not going to have anything going through it but clean fluid instead of flushing through the uh, old fluid first. So now I've got to fill that reservoir back up and uh, turn the wheels straight. Start the, uh, crank the engine over again. Fill the reservoir up. Turn the wheels all the way to the right this time. Crank it again. So just I'm going to just go through that process several times to... Uh, try to work the fluid all through that gear. I don't want to just pump out or flush the power steering pump. I, just, I want to pump out the entire system. And there's a piston in there in this gear that goes back and forth like that. So there's a fluid reservoir here and a fluid reservoir there. And I want to force all that old fluid out of there. And um, this is the best way I can think of to do it. Most of the cars I've done um, just by turning the wheels left and right will draw enough vacuum from the system and force the fluid out of there that you don't have to do it like this you get a much better drain but hopefully this method is going to give me a, a pretty good drain fluid smells pretty old I've already gotten a sample of it already so I'll get that analyzed and uh, we'll see what kind of shape that gear is in so let me uh, continue on with this process it's just a little bit tedious and then um, I'll go ahead and uh, Bust this loose here and take off the return line and integrated cooler. That cooler is uh, nothing but a coil of tubing right there. So I'll take out that whole assembly, get access to the uh, return hose, cut a length out of it, splice in the f inline filter, hook it all back together and bleed the system and we should be in business. Okay, I finally went through basically two quarts and uh, part of another. I've got the uh, integrated power steering return line and cooler. You can see it's just a coil of tubing uh, removed from the vehicle. And um, this is the power steering return flexible hose. And I've got this filter. It actually will work. It does. It is 3 8 and it will fit into the, the hose quite nicely. I was a little bit worried about that, but... Uh, that's not going to be a concern. And what I'm going to do is just uh, take a pair of scissors there and carefully splice out a section of this hose and um, put the filter basically where this bend is. This goes up toward the power steering pump, so I kind of want to get it centered up. But also I've got to think about um, being able to change this filter out without having to remove this whole assembly and everything. But if I do, that's not not that big of a deal. Um, these power steering systems don't have any kind of filtration at all. So uh, it's really a good idea to put a filter in here now that they make these kinds of things and make that power steering pump and gear last forever, which are quite expensive. So um, I'll go ahead and uh, get this put in, use these screw clamps to tighten it down, and then I'll uh, blow out the end here with some co compressed air to make sure that uh, all the contamination is gone, if there is any. And then we'll be ready to go back in the vehicle with it. Okay, so there's the uh, finished product. I've got the uh, two screw clamps on, and then the original factory clamp is ready to slide on up once I get it on the uh, power steering pump. And it does have... Uh, an indication of the flow so you want to make sure that you get the filter put in correctly the flow goes um, away from the cooler and toward the pump so um, I've got this uh, line all cleaned up that goes into the power steering gear and um, now 
This uh, strange looking assembly is ready to go back in and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Well, it's kind of hard to see, but now we have the finished product all installed and uh, hooked up to the power steering reservoir with the original clamp. And uh, maybe you can get a better look from this angle. Uh, maybe not, it's just kind of really cramped and hard to see. But uh, anyway, that basically uh, completes the job. I've already got the power steering reservoir full of fluid and everything, and I'm going to go ahead and run the engine and turn the wheels left to right and bleed the system of any air. And um, hopefully the combination of the uh, magnifying dual filter, inline filter, and the synthetic type F transmission fluid will uh, make this original pump and uh, power steering gear basically last forever or the life of the truck because these components are really expensive to replace and uh, you can put these filters basically on any car and it really does go a long way to prolonging the life of the components because um, as I said before most cars don't have any kind of filtration whatsoever for the power steering system that's problem number one and problem number two is most people never flush out their power steering fluid <laughs> and uh, don't really know there's anything wrong until they hear noises and groaning sounds and stuff like that and by then it's too late. So um, hopefully I've gotten to all this stuff just in the nick of time. And um, that leaves just one more fluid to change and that'll be the uh, front differential there. As soon as I can devise a way to get all the old fluid out of there without taking the uh, differential out because the uh, differential cover is integrated in with the uh, one of these beams. So that's going to be a little bit of a challenge. I'm going to have to find a way to pump that stuff out of there, but that'll be the uh, last fluid change I do. And then uh, this thing will be ready for the road, basically. I got a, one of the pads on the inside, on that side, is getting thin for the front brakes, so that'll probably be the next job I do, but that won't be for a while yet. It's, it's got a few thousand miles left on it, but hopefully uh, you guys can uh, take what I've done here and uh, apply some of these same principles and concepts to your own vehicles.